Hey everyone and welcome to this vegan dinners of the week video. This is a really realistic look at what I eat in a week as a vegan and some of it is home cooked, some of it is food prepped, some of it is leftovers and how I rejuge leftovers in kind of like a fun, really like in a practical but fun way because leftovers can be kind of boring but they're also really handy but boring. So I'm gonna show you how I rejuge them to make them a little bit more fun and just to keep things really easy throughout the week. I also got some takeout on one of the nights here. So you're gonna see a really good mix of everything and I hope that it gives you some good ideas. Give this video a thumbs up if you're excited to see these vegan dinners of the week and let's go ahead and get started with night number one. This dinner was one of the best ones that we had all week and I had been to the grocery store earlier in the day. So I came home, I put away the groceries. I actually filmed a grocery haul on this day because I got a lot of fun stuff on this trip. So stay tuned for that grocery haul video. But on this day, I put away the groceries and then I prepped a black bean and corn salad. I just do this with some frozen corn, canned black beans. I combine it in a bowl with some fresh lime juice and cilantro and that's pretty much it. You can taste it and add salt and pepper to taste and it's a great thing to meal prep at the beginning of the week because it holds up really well in the fridge and it's really versatile. So you can serve it as a side dish, you can spoon it over salads for quick lunches, or you could put it in tacos. That's really good too and it really just gets more and more flavorful as it sits and marinates in the fridge. So Great thing to prep at the beginning of the week. So I did that and then put that in the fridge till dinner time. I also went ahead and prepped some potatoes for the next few days. And so I just chopped them up, threw them in a big pot and cooked them until they were like al dente, not completely fork tender, but much softer. And then I seasoned them with some paprika, all-purpose seasoning and dried Italian herbs, drizzled them with olive oil, and then I baked at 400 until they were nice and crispy around the edges. While that was in the oven, I had some brown rice going, and then I also grabbed some greens that were in the fridge. I had been to the grocery store, like I said, and I had new fresh veggies that I wanted to use throughout the week, but I wanted to get rid of all of the greens that were left over from the week before so that nothing would go to waste and end up like shoved in the back of the fridge. So I randomly just steamed some greens to have on the side so that nothing would go to waste. And the last thing that I did was make some tempeh crumbles and this is really easy You just take the packet of tempeh and you crumble it into a pan with some water and soy sauce Cover that with a lid and let all of that water absorb into the tempeh This usually takes about five to seven minutes and then when all of the moisture is out of the pan I'll add some taco seasoning smoked paprika and a little olive oil I'll let that crisp up in the pan for like two to three minutes And then I'll finish it with a dusting of nutritional yeast and then we're ready to plate And I really think it's the combination of sauces that you put on top of all this that really ties the whole thing together and makes it so good like the sauces make this dinner and so I went ahead and I served up the potatoes the rice the greens the bean and corn salad and also the tempeh crumbles I topped this with some salsa guacamole and instead of sour cream I used coconut yogurt this one is a really nice thick coconut yogurt that's kind of cooling and tangy and creamy works really good especially on the potatoes like the crispy potatoes such a good combination and I finished it with a little hot sauce and this was so good. Still not a great angle, but we are having leftovers. We were both really excited about it. We've been talking about how much we liked last night's dinner basically all day. So we're very much looking forward to this. I saw online that if you have burrito filling and you want to do some kind of like, you want to re it, you can make like a burrito fried rice with all the fillings and then just top it with all the sauces. And I thought about that, but honestly, I want it almost exactly like I had it last night. Just heat it up, repeat, because it was that good, so. That's what we're going to do. So for dinner tonight, we're gonna be doing something kind of, I don't know, like German inspired, I would say. It's gonna be sausages, potatoes, sauerkraut, and I'm gonna make a cucumber salad. And it's one of those things that definitely gets better the longer it sits. So I'm gonna do that first and then make everything else. And by the time I'm ready with dinner, it will be perfect. You could even do this the night before. It's really easy, but I really love the like cool, crunchy, sour with the more hearty, savory flavors. So let's get started on that. 
I mix some sliced cucumbers with sugar, salt, vinegar, and water, and I just let that hang out in the fridge. I should have sliced the cucumbers a little bit thinner, so I'll make sure to do that next time, but it's that easy. I put that in the fridge, and then I grabbed the vegan sausages and the sauerkraut. And this is the sauerkraut that we are going to have. This came in the 4P box, and it's really, really good. It's a local sauerkraut made by Number One Sons. It's very spicy though. It has some jalapeno in it, so just a little bit of that for me, but it's really, really good. So it's gonna be lots of savory, salty, hearty flavors. It's a cold, rainy day in DC today, so it's gonna be the perfect way to end a work day. I've just been editing all day today. I was working on the DC vlog, which should be up on my channel already when you're watching this. So I've been doing that today, and now I'm gonna get started on dinner. I already had the potatoes prepped from the other day, so all I did was saute some greens. I had some red chard, which is so beautiful. It has this like big green leaf with red vining all throughout it. It just looks like health when you look at it, and it's really tasty. You can kind of cook it up like any other kind of green. I like to saute the stem first because it's a little bit more tough, so I'll chop that up saute it for like two minutes, add some garlic, and then I'll add the leaves so they don't get too soft. Add a splash of water, cover it, let it steam, super easy. Then I just sprinkle with salt and pepper at the end. And in another pan, I just sauteed the sausages, really just to warm them through and kind of crisp up the edges. And while that was going, I was watching Inventing Anna on Netflix and sipping some white wine out of these really cute wine glasses that I found on Amazon. I think they look so fancy. I feel very fancy when I drink out of them. So I usually have either music or a podcast or an audiobook or a show on in the background when I'm cooking. I feel like it just adds on ambiance and it makes it a really enjoyable experience so that was really nice and then it was ready to serve and for sauces on this night we had a parsley and scallion hummus that was really good on the potatoes and we had two different kinds of mustard actually which is mostly for the sausages but it's also good on the potatoes and it was just a simple Dijon and then this really cool dill pickle mustard from Trader Joe's and that was dinner dinner time. We have leftovers from last night, but it's not quite enough to make another meal out of. So I'm going to turn the leftovers that we have into pizza. And that's a really good tip for any of you who are like wanting to use up leftovers, but it's just not substantial enough to make a meal. One of the best ways to really stretch your ingredients is to turn it into a pizza. So here's the assembly line. We've got the pizza, we've got the sauce, we've got the cheese, we've got the toppings. I find dinners like this to be really fun. So we're just going to kind of decorate them how we want. And then we've got some seasonings to sprinkle on top. Garlic powder is a good one. This is really just, I feel like I put this on everything, really versatile. Some salt, always good on veggies. And then I have some Italian seasoning. got a bunch of golden beets so those are roasting right now just with some olive oil and sea salt and then I'm gonna throw that into a big just super simple mixed green salad with whatever veggies are left over and a dressing that I'll show you spicy lime tahini dressing from Kava I found this at Whole Foods and it looks really good so we're gonna give this a try on the salad and it'll be just super quick and easy On this night, we made a Instant Pot lentil and veggie soup. I found a recipe online and we kind of just modified it based on what we had on hand. about 20 minutes and then right at the end I added some chopped up greens just the leafy part I added some vegan parmesan and red wine vinegar and I have to say the combination of the vegan parmesan cheese with the red wine vinegar with the tomatoey broth that we created in the soup 
such a good combination definitely something to try because that was just really really flavorful but to be honest this soup was really just kind of okay it wasn't the best soup i've ever made and part of that is because i turned a not instant pot soup recipe into an instant pot soup recipe and a big part of where the flavor comes from in soups like this is by taking a few minutes to saute the onions and the carrots and the celery if you take about eight to ten minutes to saute the aromatics of a soup first what you're doing is creating a really flavorful base from which you can kind of build lots of flavor from so it's a really important step when you're making a good homemade soup and you can saute in the instant pot it's just that I didn't do it I threw everything in at the same time and I really kind of lost a flavor opportunity there so that's something to keep in mind the other thing is that I was veganizing a non-vegan recipe and in this recipe the recipe developer called for a parmesan cheese rind and that gets thrown into the broth and as the soup is cooking it kind of melts a little bit and it slowly adds flavor because of the fat and salt and the umami quality of the parmesan and it kind of just makes a richer thicker saltier more flavorful broth basically and so by adding the cheese in at the end it didn't have that same flavor profile and the broth ended up being kind of thin and just not very flavorful because of that. So what I could have done instead to keep it vegan is what I've done in my pasta e fagioli soup recipe, which is to add a little bit of miso paste and a little bit of olive oil. That helps to recreate that depth. It adds that saltiness, that richness, and really ups the flavor of the broth. So I would definitely recommend doing that if you ever see a soup recipe that calls for a Parmesan cheese rind. I really need to learn how to breathe properly in these videos. I try to say everything in one breath. <laughs> It does not work. But one thing that we did that added so much flavor was we added some of this green dragon hot sauce to the broth, like to the pot itself before we served it up. And it really added a nice kick and a little bit more saltiness that we were lacking from not adding the Parmesan cheese rind. I served this up by cutting some crusty bread into like little crouton pieces. I put that in the bowl first and then I ladled on the lentil and veggie soup. I topped it with some more bread croutons and then I added some fresh lemon juice, little vegan Parmesan Parmesan cheese and some parsley on top. It served like this, it was hearty, it was warm, it was full of lots of nourishing plant-based goodness, and it was pretty tasty. But if I were to make the soup again, I would definitely do things a little bit differently. And I was gonna cap it there and just kind of keep this Monday through Friday, but on the next night we actually got some really good takeout food and I wanted to include it in this video. Even though this full clip is gonna be in a future vlog, you'll see much more detail later on, but I wanted to include it in this video to one, show that I don't always make every single meal from scratch every single day. I rely heavily on meal prepped foods and leftovers and I kind of mix and match based on what I have on hand and what I'm feeling that day, but I also love takeout, especially here in DC. I've heard so much about the Ethiopian food here and how there's really great vegan friendly options. And on this night, we tried a place called Zini's Deli and World Market in Silver Spring, Maryland. We got a veggie combo plate and this was definitely the best dinero I've ever had. It was so soft and so squishy. It was sour, it was soft, it was light. It was a little bit thicker than some of the ones I've had before. And it was just, delightful like such a good meal so many flavors just the kind of meal that makes you feel really good there's lots of like lentils and root veggies and oh, it was so good so you're gonna see more of that in an upcoming video but I wanted to include it to show you another kind of vegan meal that we had this week but I hope you enjoyed this video I hope you enjoyed seeing what I eat for dinner in a week I'm gonna include a lot of recipes and kind of more detailed tips in the description box below so make sure you check that out if you enjoyed seeing this week of vegan dinners please give this video a thumbs up. Make sure you subscribe to my channel so you never miss a future video and I will see you in a video very soon. Bye!